Hello and welcome to Mr. Quakers Teaches. Mr. Quakers Teaches is an online learning hub that provides video lessons and online tuition in English literature and other subjects of the humanities in the British curriculum for the IGCSE O level and A level exams. In today's lesson, I'll be providing a detailed analysis of Farmhand by James K. Baxter. My analysis will be presented with rolling annotations of the stanzas, lines, and important words and phrases in the poem. I'll emphasize the themes, literary devices, both figurative and poetic, the tone, structure, language of the poem. You can access the course that provides stanza by stanza, line by line, and word for word, written and video analysis of all the 15 poems in the IGCSE anthology at mrquakersteachers.com. The written course has been particularly helpful to students sitting in the IGCSE because it gives clear guidance on their approved writing styles. Without further ado, let's demystify Farmhand by James K. Baxter. Let's first speak about the poet. James K. Baxter was born on the 29th of June, 1926, and he died on the 22nd of October, 1972. He was a New Zealand poet and playwright. He was is regarded as one of New Zealand's most well-known and controversial literary figures. He was very prolific, and he produced numerous poems, plays, and articles in his short life, and is regarded as a preeminent writer of his generation. Farmhand. So this is how the poem appears it's in five stanzas. Let's read the poem, and then we'll start breaking it down from the stanzas and then from the lines. Farmhand by James K. Baxter. You see him light a cigarette, at the hall door, careless, leaning his back against the wall, or telling some new joke to a friend, or looking out into the secret night. But always his eyes turn to the dance floor and the girls drifting like flowers, before the music that tears slowly in his mind an old wound open. His red sunburned face and hairy hands were not made for dancing or love making but rather the earth we breaking to the plow and crops slow growing as his mind. He has no girl to run her fingers through his sandy hair and giggle at his side when Sunday's couple walk. Instead, he has his awkward hopes, his envious dreams to yearn to. But ah, in harvest, watch him, fucking stalks, effortless and strong, or listening like a lover to a song, clear without fault. Of a new tractor engine. So the very first thing we should talk about about the poem is the title. So the title Farmhand shows that Baxter is sort of condescending or speaking down to the persona. He describes the man or refers to the man as a farmer, which essentially means that he's just speaking about the man because of the man's job or the man's occupation. And this attitude of Baxter mirrors or is, is, is an example of how society also treats people. We tend to view people who engage in manual work or blue collar jobs as being inferior to those who work in offices or work you know with in white collar jobs. And that's like the sense that Baxter for me expresses by his title farmhand because he, he he speaks to the man by the man's occupation. The first thing that Baxter starts with is that you, which means he's speaking to somebody in the second person. He reveals that he's speaking in the second per person point of view. The use of you also presents Baxter as a gossip. You know, there's someone who is speaking behind the persona behind his back. So he's speaking about the persona, but the persona is not there, but then he's speaking about the persona to a, to a second person. And then he says, we'll see him. So here he reveals his gender that is, he's, he's male, but then look out for him. And the very first thing he tells us about the persona is that, light a cigarette at the hall door no so the very first thing that baxter tells us about the persona presents the persona as somebody who is like an habitual smoker you know he's someone who engages in smoking and he describes the way that where the man or he explains that where the man smokes is at the hall door careless careless expresses or reveals baxter's tone because the tone of a poem is really important so that's Baxter Stone. The man's um, the man smoking at the hall door is a careless move, according to Baxter. And I think Baxter is saying this because 
he thinks that the action of the man is like a fire hazard so the man can cause fire and he says while the man is smoking he leans his back or he's leaning his back against the wall against the wall so here the man is presented as somebody who's like you know this is his posture he's laid back and he's cool and i think all of these factors annoys back baxter and he reveals that all telling some new joke to a friend telling some new joke presents the persona as someone who's jovial but then at the same time the fact that he tells the new joke only to a friend reveals that he's very selective of the people that he tells his jokes to and then the fact that he says new joke like the um, baxter describes the, the the joke that the man the personal tells us new reveals that the man there's a chance that the man maybe takes his time to to learn the jokes and then before he reveals them he doesn't go about you know regurgitating um, jokes that have already been told but he sort of manufactures or creates his own or sort of writes his own ju jokes to to tell but then he tells it only to a friend so it means that if baxter is listening to to the man's joke it could be that baxter is the man's friend whom the man you know tells the jokes to you know the only friend that baxter that the, the persona has the farmer has or it could be that baxter heaps drops on their jokes and then goes about and tells other people and we also see that in the first stanza already that baxter uses a lot of ors or to show us that the, there are alternative actions that the man takes so the man engages in is is engaging in different actions and this presents the persona as somebody who is restless and is constantly active and or looking into the secret night the use of the word looking presents the persona as somebody who is pensive and as somebody who is also sensitive pensive in the sense that he engages in thoughts deep thoughts he asks himself deep questions like is there a god what's why are we are on earth what's what's our, our purpose you know where do people go to when they die you know those kind of deep deep questions how did the world come about so into the secret night and the the way that baxter presents the persona present sort of shows that the man has like some is happy one minute and then suddenly he's sad like he's somebody who's bipolar and this is a really striking image because baxter is telling the reader about this or a uh, 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 list is listening about this persona but then the persona cannot speak for himself but then he looks into the secret and then the use of the word secret there sort of reveals that the persona's life is not very public he's a, he's a private somebody that's very private you know he doesn't he's not somebody that is public is a public figure you also use see the use of enjambment as well in the first stanza you see that in the flow of words from the first line to the second from the second line to the third from the third into the fourth and this sort of shows us the constancy of the persona how he's, con he's constantly doing something he smokes a cigarette he leans his back he's telling a new joke he's looking into the night so in just the first stanza we see that the persona is engaged in multiple actions and the use of enjambment also reveals the Baxter's eyes are trained, are focused on the persona. He follows every action that the persona engages in. And he's constantly trying to look out and see what the persona is doing so he can, he can, he can reveal it later on to people. In the second stanza, there's a shift. It says, but always his eyes turn. So Baxter informs the, 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 the reader here that the man's eyes turn, always. Now the use of always and what Baxter has told us in the first stanza are not doesn't work together because if the man is looking into the secret now why, why is that always looking his eyes are always turning this tells you that the man looks if uh, like you know engages in deep thought for a, a few moments and then suddenly turns his eye and he and, and then Baxter tells us that it's this he doesn't just look at one location he actually looks at a look a, a, a particular location and but then he looks at the girls as well and he tells us that to the dance floor and the girls drifting like flowers so you know it's it's like the the persona is sort of dodgy he takes a few minutes and looks at the dance floor and then he takes a, a few minutes and look at, looks at the girls as they dance but baxter describes the way the girls dance as drifting like flowers the use of drifting like flower flowers presents the girls as hard to catch he also presents them as colorful, graceful dancers who swayed effortlessly and happily to the tune of the music. The use of the word 
drifting like flowers also presents or suggests that the girls were very were dancing suggestively sexually and erotically you know moving their body gyrating their body in such a way that it was erotic and sensual it also it also alludes to their delicateness as flowers you no know, flowers are delicate it talks about how the girls are delicate and then he also presents them as as girls who are out of reach for the persona he cannot he's, he's not in their league he continues that before the music that tears the word tears there's a pun because it, it has it means it can it can be used to express different ideas he also shows that he means that first of all the first meaning for the tears is that the, the persona sheds tears before the music that tears so he sheds the tears but then in the second instance he also means that the the music tears something like literally tears something apart in the persona's mind he's emotional the the, the, the music makes him emotional and then he begins to and hurts him and the use of the word the the phrase before the music you know for me evokes the image that the persona is has been summoned by the music just like how the accused accused people are usually summoned before a judge so the persona has been summoned and the music here could be you know a couple song that reminds the persona of a broken relationship so that could be the reason why he tears maybe it's a song that he used to share with somebody he was in love with maybe a wife or a girlfriend that and now the relationship is broken or the person is dead and so the music sort of tears and makes him cry we also see the alliteration of the t sound in that tears there so that provides um auditory imagery of the of the of the the tearing that the tearing of the 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 persona as in his mind as he as he as he cries and he continues that slowly in his mind an old wood open now the use of slowly there suggests that the persona's experience is gradual but then it's mental torture so it's gradual it's not something that is rushed so it is careful but then it's extremely painful and he uses the word an old wound as a metaphor for the persona's past ex negative experiences so the word an old wound or old wound there is is a metaphor for the, the persona's um past experiences so when the persona hears this song that that tears in his mind an old wound like a past experience that maybe he's forgotten is re is brought back to his memory and then it causes him pain emotional pain that literally makes him to cry in the third stanza, Baxter continues that he's read some bent face. Now, in the first stanza, Baxter tells us about the man's attitude, what the man is doing. In the second stanza, he tells us about how the man interacts with the girls and it interacts with the music and what the music does to him. In the third stanza, Baxter becomes a bit more personal. He begins to express or reveal, you know, publicly how the persona looks to the reader. And the very first thing he says is that he's right sunburn face and his use of the word red red sunburn face presents the persona as somebody that's very unattractive and someone whose face is literally experiences exfoliation exfoliation is when like you have a rock and then the rock is heat heat very hard or it's like it's it's, it's, it's it's been like you know exposed to the sun and then it begins to it, it, it begins to crack you know like the the persona's face here is, is cracked and then it's stunned and so it's bent and so it's there are, there are bent patches all over his face and it's it's, it's, it's red so like a beastly man and hairy hands it, it, show, it shows here that the man is repulsive to touch that provides tactile imagery that exposes that the persona is you know repulsive to touch so it's not only unattractive you know when you look at him but even when you touch him he's repulsive he's very hairy and i think this idea pre um, reminds me of beauty and the beast where the beast is a very you know it's like a beastly man and then it's very hairy i think in this instance baxter presents the personas you know the the beast in that um fable in that um, um 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 story and then he says we're not made for dancing so now baxter is telling us what he thinks about the man's features he's saying that because the man has red sunburn face and hairy hands that the man was not made for dancing dancing means you know is, is, a, is a metaphor for courtship any external show of um, affection or fun the man should not engage in any sort of fun so is he's, he's, he's unsuitable for any form of romantic relationship 
or love making. Love making is more intimate, sens sensual pleasure. The man has no right to engage in any act of sensual pleasure. So the man is not only, I mean, in his in in, in Baxter's opinion, is not only shouldn't only stay away from courtship. The man should not even try to even get into any relationship with anybody. And that tells you how society, as a society, we are so focused on people's appearance and how sometimes we make judgments on people based primarily on their physical appearance. And these are some of the attitudes that Baxter throws up in the in this stanza. Now he now tells what he now tells what he thinks the man should rather engage in. He says, but rather the earth wave break into the plow. So here he, he's telling that the man should stick to menial work. And I think he's saying that because he thinks that because the man is dealing with the ground, the ground is not going to have to deal with his red sunburned face and his hairy hands. So, but rather the earth weight breaking. And the use of the word earth weight breaking produces visual imagery of the plot of ground being plowed. So the man should stick to plowing. You know, he should just stick to plowing. He shouldn't try to engage in any form of dancing or love making. And crops slow growing as his mind. I think. Apart from the the the, the, the insults that that um, Basta um, the invective that Basta uses to uh, ex, to you know um, describe the persona, for me I think this is one of the most you know um, um, poor poorly thought of um, attitude that Basta reveals to a persona who we don't know if the man has done anything to him or not. He says and crops slow growing as his mind. So here. Basta suggests that the man takes an eternity to make very basic decisions. And so the man's focus should be on the ground, first of all. And then secondly, because he, he, he has very slow ability, almost as if it's like the man is like somebody who is like a retard or something, the man should just stick to that. So he should just stick, stick to, to wave the, 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 the head to plow it. And, and also to the crops, because the crops are just like him. They are slow growing as the man's mind. So the man is not somebody who has a very um, smart mind. I think that Bassa's attitude in this stanza reveals that people judge people superficially based on their physical appearance or attractiveness. So we tend to look at people and we judge them based on how attractive or unattractive they are. And Bassa's attitude is similar to the rest of society today. So in today's society, we place a lot of emphasis on how people look, on cosmetic beauty. And so people have this push to appear, you know, perfect, to appear good looking to society so that they can achieve um, or receive um, society's approval. In the fourth stanza, he now goes even to more detail about the man's personal life. So he's moved to from what the man, how the man appears and what he thinks the man how he thinks the man should engage in to now to tell us about the man's private life you know social life he says he has no girl to run his fingers through his sandy hair so the very first thing we see here is that he's trying to tell us that the the the, the persona is lonely and the persona lacks any form of affection from the opposite sex there's no one to flirt with him because you know that the, the act of running fingers through sandy hair is a, is a form of flirting and he also provides tactile imagery of the persona engaging with somebody of the opposite sex but baxter is telling the reader that here as he speaks the man has nobody to run his fingers through his sandy hair and he continues that and giggle at his side his use of the word sandy hair as a metaphor he wants, he presents, this presents the, 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 the persona's hair as grainy, sandy, you know, it's grainy, unkempt, coarse to touch. This feather highlights the persona's unattractiveness. So red sun bent face, hairy hands, sandy hair. So these are all like deep words that expresses that, that Baxter is very focused on how the persona appears. And he continues that and giggle at his side. The giggle there provides auditory imagery of the lack, the silence that the man, the persona has to deal with. There's no one to share his jokes. Remember in the, in the first stanza, the third line, we are told that some new joke. That there's nobody to, to share his jokes with him or his joys. So he's alone. And Baxter continues that when Sunday couples walk. So for he, here, we see that Baxter is trying to reveal to the reader that everybody 
in polite society except the farmhand has a has somebody to work with the farmhand is the only person that is alone so he's everyone else has has a significant other a girlfriend or a boyfriend but the or a lover but the 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 the, the, the farmhand is alone so when sunday couples are working the farmhand is alone and he tells us that this is what the man does instead because since the man doesn't have anybody to hang out with he says instead he has his awkward hopes so his use of the word awkward hopes that suggests that the persona's desire desires do not conform to those of normal people the man's dreams and aspirations do not fit into normal society it also suggests that the persona is embarrassed to share them he's, he's embarrassed to share his you know his hopes his desires with people because they are awkward they don't fit into the the dreams and aspirations of other people and baxter continues that his envious dream so he, he goes on to describe the man's dreams as envious and this reveals to me that people there are certain people who when they hear about the persona become jealous and covet the persona's dreams they want the persona's dreams for for themselves even though baxter doesn't reveal the the persona's dreams with there's a sense that his, his dreams were something that other people in society would want for themselves they, they would it's something that they would desire for themselves as well and we also see the repetition of his here twice in the last line of the fourth stanza so his awkward hopes his envious dream the repetition of his emphasizes the uniqueness of the persona's dreams and aspirations so apart from the persona no other person in society holds those hopes and no other person holds those dreams so the, the persona even with all his ugly um, ugliness all his unattractiveness is quite unique and that is a key point here that I, I, I glean from the poem that no matter how people present themselves or what people say about us we are unique in our individuality and so because we are unique in our individuality we shouldn't allow the aspirations of people to bring our morale down and and, and baxter continues that ends the line by the stanza by saying yantu yantu suggests that the persona's aspiration is implausible and unrealistic so it's like building castles in the sky so it shows that the persona is, sits down and foolishly ruminates on his dream is like he's there and then he's thinking about these dreams that according to vax that are going to be impossible for the persona to ever achieve so he yearns to it is like a like a thread like he, he just foolishly engages in it over and over and over and over and again and the last stanza the fifth stanza of the poem Baxter's tone and attitude towards the persona changes. It changes from insults to praise. The very first thing he tells the reader is that, but ah, like you know, like ah, there's this expression, you know, audible and uncontrollable exclamation that comes out from Baxter. It's like, but ah, you know, look at like he 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 changes. So for eighty percent of the poem, ba Baxter has just been giving it from the first stanza into the second, the third stanza, the fourth stanza has been insulting and saying negative things about the, the persona's um, habits in the first stanza, about his what he engages in, in the second stanza, about how he looks in the third stanza, about his personal life, his rela relationship in the fourth stanza. But he says here that Baha, you know, he's he's he's, he's surprised. And what he sees in harvest watch him watch him in there is a directive is a demand from baxter and he's telling the listener that but in harvest and watch him don't fail to do that there's a sense of pride in baxter's voice so when it comes to the tone of the poem the tone changes as well in this stanza from the first to the fourth stanza it's very insulting it's very condescending but in the final stanza there's a sense of pride you know, Baxa is proud of what the, the, the persona is doing and he's like, but ah, look at him, he's, he is, there's admiration, there's awe, there's respect. So, and that takes the place of insult and disrespect from the first to the fourth stanza. And that's a key point when it comes to the tone that you have to speak on as you write in your exams. He continues that fucking stalks effortless and strong. So he's, he, he, he tells the reader, he tells the, the listener that see, you know when you watch him like a movie because when you say watch watch him it's like the man is a movie so it's very entertaining you look at look at him but it does he says that he undertakes his work without force or sweat just fucking his stock 
effort, effortlessly. When somebody does something effortlessly, it comes to them naturally. They don't have to strain themselves. And the fact that a person is strong shows that he's very powerful. You know, he's, he, he wields extremely, you know, power. He ends the second line of the first stanza with a dash. That indicates that Vasta paused. He paused to allow his listeners or his listeners some time to look at the persona. So he's like, look at him. And when he says that, he pauses. He takes a few minutes off to allow his listeners. So, but in harvest, but in harvest, watching, look, 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 like a movie. And while you're watching movies, you know, like when you watch movies, for example, in a cinema, you don't want noise. And that's the same idea that Baxter uses here by his, um, um, the use of dash after the word strong. And he continues that all. Now, if the man is not doing that, he's not uh, fucking stock, um, stocks effortless and strong, he's engaging, he's listening like a lover to a song. And this for me is particularly striking because when it comes to some of the, th the one of the themes of the poem, I think the poem, the poem, the, one of the themes of the poem is the dignity of work. And here, Baxter is saying that, or listening like a lover to a song. So when the man engages in the work, the man is engaging in the work as if he is he's, he's, he's dealing with a lover. So he is very intimate. The, the job, he takes the job, he is mentally engaged in the job, emotionally, physically engaged in the job. He's, it's intimate with the job, so that he does the job, the job perfectly. So just like the way a lover listens to a song, that's how the man engages and that's like a powerful image because when you're listening as a lover to a song or maybe a lover song you are you are you are entirely you know focused on it you don't want any distractions and when the man is doing his job is the same attitude that the man has and he says clear and without fault so the words clear and without fault emphasizes the perfection of the output and the undivided attention with which the persona works so it's clear when something is clear there's no um, come back, um, come back, uh, it's not cumbersome. Without fault means that it is perfect. It also reveals that the persona works as noiselessly as a brand new tractor because it says clear without fault of a new tractor engine. And when you get the new tractor engine, it's just you know it's just beautiful to listen to. And that's the same kind of attitude that the persona engages in when it works. Now, when when it comes to the IGCSE or any of the poetry exams for that matter. It's very important that you speak on the structure of the poem. And one of the first things we see about the poem is that the poem has quatrain stanzas. What that means is that each of the stanzas is made up of four lines. And so, and then it's five stanzas in total. So the entire poem is 20 lines. But then the poem also has a rhyme scheme as well. If you look at it, you can see it has an A, B, B, A, C, D, C, C, D, D, C, E F F E, so like it follows G H S G I J J I rhyme scheme, so it's like it flows, and the use of this rhyme scheme for me reveals that the the uh, Baxter has spoken so much about the persona that he knows exactly what to say at what time. He knows the punchline when the punchline is about to appear because it's not like something that he says haphazardly, but he knows like somebody who gossips about somebody to person A and person B and person C and person D and then knows what to say in order to sort of gain his listener's attention. And I think that's why um, Baxter uses the rhyme scheme because when it comes to literature, well, you don't just only say, oh, the, the poet uses a rhyme scheme. What is the effect of the rhyme scheme on the poem? And I think that the use of this rhyme scheme creates the effect that Baxter has spoken about the persona to multiple people, multiple listeners and so is He's like he's become like an expert <laughs> on the farmhand's life, and when it comes to the tone, the poet crit criticizes and insults the persona, persona's social life, physical and cognitive ability from the first from the first stanza to the fourth stanza. But in the fifth stanza, his his tone switches to awe, that's respect, reverence, even he rever he reverses the the, the, the farmhand's like you know it's like he's shocked. About how the the abilities of the farmhand. Some of the themes of the poem in, include the dignity of work, the life of a social mi misfit. He also talks about the difference between social and work life. So, and the so societal standards of attractiveness. Society has its own standards of who is attractive and who is not, and what your 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 attractiveness one way or the other 
um, she will, she will accrue to you because oh, if he is not that handsome, why does he have this or why does he why is this why is she married to this man when she's not when she's looking like this? So usually when it comes to the IGCSC, most of the questions usually come around or are, 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 are informed by the theme. So you could be asked that how does James K. Baxter powerfully present the li the life of um, the farmhand as a social misfit in farmhand? So that's like a very um, a, a, a question that can be given to you. Thank you so much for joining the lesson. If you enjoy the lesson, you, you can purchase the course and customize how you learn. The course provides you with stanza by stanza, line by line, and word for word written analysis of all the 15 poems in your IGCSE anthology. You can also get analysis of the prose and drama, characters, themes for the Purple Eye Discourse by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and also the Crucible by Arthur Miller. You can also find information on the unseen poem or on the unseen paper on the website as well. Secondly, you can book for private tuition if you need help in English language, English literature. Maybe you need a bit more explanation and guidance. You can also reach out to mrquakersteachers.com and then you can send a message or you can sign in and need and be taught help with history, geography, English literature or English language. Or you can join our IGCSE tribe. From time to time, I put important informations there to help my students and others as they prepare for the IGCSE. So here you have it. Farmhand by James K. Baxter has been demystified. Thank you so much and have a blessed week. Bye-bye.